Hi everyone, welcome to InScience. In this video, we'll explore the fascinating working principles of DC motors, remarkable machines that have revolutionized modern technology by efficiently converting electrical energy into controlled mechanical motion. From the smallest toys to massive industrial equipment, DC motors power our world through an elegant interplay of magnetism and electricity. Before diving into motors, let's explore the fundamental force that makes them possible, magnetism. Magnetism surrounds us in countless everyday applications, though we rarely pause to consider its presence. Every magnet, regardless of size or shape, possesses two distinct poles, north and south. These poles exhibit a simple yet powerful behavior, unlike poles attract each other, while like poles repel. This isn't just a surface phenomenon, it's rooted in the atomic structure of magnetic materials themselves. Within ferromagnetic materials like iron, nickel, and cobalt, tiny regions called magnetic domains exist. Think of these domains as microscopic neighborhoods where atoms align their magnetic properties in the same direction. In an unmagnetized piece of iron, these domains point randomly in all directions, canceling each other out. However, when exposed to an external magnetic field, these domains begin to align, creating the familiar magnetic properties we observe. When we introduce electricity into this magnetic world, something extraordinary happens. As electric current flows through any conductor, let's say a simple copper wire, it generates a magnetic field around itself. This phenomenon transforms an ordinary wire into an electromagnet, a temporary magnet that exists only while current flows. The beauty of electromagnets lies in their controllability. Unlike permanent magnets whose strength and polarity remain fixed, electromagnets can be turned on and off, made stronger or weaker, and even have their poles reversed simply by controlling the electrical current. To understand how this works at the atomic level, imagine the copper wire contains billions of randomly oriented atoms. When electricity flows through the wire, it creates a magnetic field that penetrates any ferromagnetic core placed inside the coil. This magnetic field aligns the iron atom's magnetic domains in the same direction, dramatically amplifying the overall magnetic effect. The more current we apply, the more domains align, creating a stronger electromagnet. This continues until all domains are perfectly aligned, a state called magnetic saturation. Now, Let's place our current-carrying coil within a stationary magnetic field. This is where the magic of motor operation begins. The coil, now acting as an electromagnet with its own north and south poles, finds itself surrounded by the external magnetic field of permanent magnets or electromagnets in the stator. First, we need to understand how our coil creates its magnetic polarity using the clock rule. Looking at any face of the current-carrying coil, if current flows in a clockwise direction, that face becomes a south pole, S. If current flows anticlockwise, it becomes a north pole, N. Now comes the fundamental interaction between magnetic fields. According to the basic law of magnetism, like poles repel while opposite poles attract. When our electromagnet coil sits within the permanent magnetic field of the stator, these magnetic fields interact with each other. The coil's magnetic field tries to align with the stator's field, North Pole seeking South Pole and vice versa, creating attractive and repulsive forces that attempt to rotate the coil. However, the rotational force is more precisely explained by Fleming's left-hand rule, which governs the mechanical force on current-carrying conductors in magnetic fields. Position your left hand with thumb, forefinger, and middle finger perpendicular to each other. Your forefinger represents the permanent magnetic field direction. Your middle finger shows current direction, and your thumb indicates the direction of mechanical force on that conductor. Since opposite sides of the rectangular coil carry current in opposite directions relative to the external field, Fleming's rule shows they experience forces in opposite directions. This creates the rotational torque, one side pushed up while the other is pushed down, causing our electromagnet coil to spin within the permanent magnetic field. However, our motor faces a critical problem. As the coil rotates and reaches the dead center position, where the coil plane becomes perpendicular to the magnetic field lines, the coil tends to stop rotating. At this position, the coil's magnetic poles align perfectly with the stator's magnetic field, creating an equilibrium condition. 
the motor experiences zero net torque because the forces on both sides of the coil now act along the same line, providing no rotational effect. One basic approach to solve this problem would be to manually reverse the battery connections at the precise moment when the coil reaches this dead center position. By switching the positive and negative terminals, we reverse the current direction through the coil, which changes its magnetic polarity and allows rotation to continue. While this works in principle, it's clearly impractical for continuous operation. We can't manually flip wires thousands of times per minute. Another method involves changing the connections to the armature coil itself rather than the entire battery. By reversing which end of the coil connects to positive and which connects to negative, we achieve the same current reversal effect. This approach is commonly used in DC motor control circuits, but again, doing this manually at high speeds is impossible. What we really need is an automatic mechanism that can reverse the current direction in the coil precisely when it reaches the dead center position, without any manual intervention. This switching must happen quickly and reliably, potentially thousands of times per minute as the motor spins at high speed. To solve this fundamental problem, we introduce the commutator, a rotary electrical switch that periodically reverses the current direction in the coil. The commutator consists of segmented copper contacts mounted on the rotating shaft, with carbon brushes maintaining electrical contact. Just as the coil reaches the dead center position, the commutator reverses the current direction through the coil. The timing of the system is absolutely critical. As the coil approaches the perpendicular position, where forces would normally drop to zero, the gap between commutator segments aligns with the brushes. At this precise moment, Electrical contact is momentarily broken, eliminating current flow and magnetic forces. The coil's momentum carries it past this dead zone, and as it continues rotating, the commutator segments reconnect with the brushes in reverse positions. This reversal is key. The same brush that was feeding current into one end of the coil now feeds current into the other end. Effectively, the current direction through the coil has been reversed, flipping its magnetic polarity just as it needs to continue rotating in the same direction. This elegant mechanical switching happens automatically every half turn, maintaining continuous rotation. According to the clock rule, this current reversal immediately flips the coil's magnetic polarity. What was previously the north pole becomes the south pole and vice versa. Now, instead of being in equilibrium with the stator field, the coil finds itself with like poles facing each other creating repulsive forces. Fleming's left-hand rule now predicts forces in the opposite direction, pushing the coil past the dead center position and continuing the rotation. This process repeats every half rotation, ensuring the coil never gets stuck at the equilibrium position and maintains continuous rotation in one direction. Real motors rarely use just a single coil because this would result in uneven torque and potential stalling at certain positions. Instead, Practical motors employ multiple armature coils arranged around the rotating core. Imagine three coils spaced 120 degrees apart around the armature. While one coil might be approaching the torque dead zone perpendicular to the magnetic field, the other two are positioned at angles where they can produce significant rotational force. This arrangement ensures that at any given moment, at least one coil is optimally positioned to generate torque. The commutator grows more sophisticated with multiple coils, featuring more segments, typically one segment per coil. As the armature rotates, different coils are energized in sequence, like runners in a relay race passing the baton. This sequential activation creates much smoother rotation and higher overall torque than a single coil could achieve. The mathematical result is significant. While a single coil produces torque that varies sinusoidally from maximum to zero, Multiple coils create overlapping torque curves that sum to produce nearly constant rotational force. This is why modern motors can maintain steady speed under varying loads. DC motors use multiple wound coils, with each coil consisting of many turns of insulated copper wire wound around the armature core slots. These multiple coils produce a much stronger magnetic field compared to a single coil, which directly translates to higher power output and greater torque. The shaft serves as the central mechanical backbone of the motor, providing the mounting foundation for both the armature and commutator. The armature core, with its multiple windings, is securely mounted to the shaft, and the commutator is also fixed to the same shaft, ensuring they rotate together as a single assembly. 
the brushes are mounted in brush holders attached directly to the motor case, with spring-loaded mechanisms that maintain constant pressure against the rotating commutator. This spring system ensures consistent electrical contact throughout the motor's operation, even as the brushes gradually wear down over time. DC motors typically use arc-shaped permanent magnets. These arc or segment magnets are specifically designed to fit efficiently within the cylindrical motor housing while providing optimal magnetic field distribution. The curved shape allows for better magnetic flux density and more uniform field interaction with the rotating armature. For protection and mounting of the entire motor system, a robust case or housing is used.